Are you ready to go dot to dot to dot in areas besides just your blocks? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the dot to dot technique to create an intricate looking border, but this is one of those designs that's pretty easy to teach. The questions only come up when you're actually quilting on it. So I'm gonna talk about things like how do you make them fit your border? How do you turn the corner? And all sorts of fun stuff. But ultimately, here's the most important thing to remember. It's so easy to create those geometric designs. Well, before we can learn how to apply it to our quilts, we gotta learn the design. So I'm gonna show you how to quilt it on the sewing machine and the long arm, and then we'll talk about things like turning the corner. So basically, I'm gonna pretend like this is my border. I'm gonna create a triangle by quilting a line directly to the other side, and then coming back. And that's gonna create a section which I'm gonna fill in. But we're gonna do the diamond design where we touch, don't touch. Now, the most important thing is if I start here, and I'm heading this direction, this is where I wanna end up. So I'm gonna to need to add another line to get to that point. Once I have my first section, I'm gonna continue by quilting another diagonal line across to the other side. And now I have my triangle to fill in, it's just gonna be inverted. I'm gonna do the same thing, filling it in. And now that we know a little bit about how it comes together, let's see it quilted on the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna quilt my first triangle. It doesn't matter which side of the border I start on. Quilting a diagonal line to the other side. And I'm gonna continue on. And honestly, it doesn't matter how big you make that first triangle because we're gonna fill it in. Or I'm gonna add some more of the diamond design. And we'll see some variations here in a second, but for right now, I'm just gonna fill that in, returning to where I started. Once I have my first section quilted, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make an inverted triangle by going back to the other side. And now I have my same triangle, just a different direction. Filling it in with more of that diamond design. And that gives me the next part of my border. And I'm gonna do it again, one more time, going to the opposite side, creating my section and filling it in. What I love about using this particular design in my borders is that you can break it up into chunks. That means I can quilt a section of the border, move into the center, and then come right back into it. Can you guess why that would be helpful? if I'm working on a larger quilt on my sewing machine or working vertically on my long arm. Let's pretend this is the outer border of my quilt and this is the beautifully pieced center. If I wanted to, I could go right into the quilting and start filling in the center. And this is just to represent any kind of beautiful quilting. As I work my way back, that's the same point I'm gonna to return to so that I can continue my border design. And in fact, if you notice, it's touching both sides of my border. So if this were an inner border, it would be perfect because I can transition, come to the border, transition, and back and forth. It's just gonna make for some really efficient quilting. I'm just kind of eyeballing my triangle. They don't have to be exactly the same size because I'm just gonna be filling them in with different designs. But if that freaks you out, don't worry. There are some things you can do to make it easier. For instance, you could use this design with line stencil. It's broken up into two inch sections so that I can quickly mark that area and have my dots to connect. Or you can look to your quilt top as a guide to help you figure out where to quilt your triangles. Let's pretend that this is our quilt and this is the border. Right here, we already have a grid that we can use as our guide. We can decide which points we wanna to connect to create our triangles. Up to this point, we've seen the diamond design, but let's play around with some variations. Let's pull some wedges. Remember, it doesn't matter what we quilt in here, just so long that we end up back at that point. But once I decide that's enough, then we know what the next step is, right? We're gonna go to the opposite side and create our next triangle. I'm in the wrong spot. I need to end up on the opposite side. I could still add another line. I could travel along my seam, or I can add some free motion quilting. is gonna be a great way to really make that design stand out. This design is great for borders of all widths. That's what makes it so versatile. If you were quilting a quilt with bigger borders or you wanted to add a lot more quilting, you could just add more rows in there. It's not the size of your initial triangle that's gonna determine the density of your quilting. It's what you fill it in with. Even though we've been doing straight lines and some free motion, we can put in some curved lines. It doesn't matter what I fill it in with as long as I end up in the direction that I'm heading. 
Now here's a couple things to think about. When you're quilting this design on your borders, if you're working on the outside border of your quilt, you wanna leave yourself about a quarter of an inch or more between the point of your triangle and the edge of your quilt because we're gonna end up coming back and binding that and it might get trimmed off. In fact, I have a quilted example where I have purposely quilted my points all the way up to the edge so that you can see what it looks like when the binding cuts it off. Yeah, that wasn't exactly what I meant to do, but you know what? It's fine. On the other side of the quilt though, this is how it should look, where those points come right up to the binding or just below and they don't run off the edge. If it's an inner border, you don't have to worry about that. You're gonna touch both sides. Let's pretend that you're not like me and that you don't prefer quilting it in chunks. You wanna do it all at one time. Instead of quilting your triangle and filling it in, you can quilt one long zigzag over the whole border and then come back and fill in the top and then fill in the bottom. If free motion quilting is a little nerve wracking for you, that's the perfect time to use your walking foot. Okay, so I know it's not technically free motion quilting, but hey, whatever it takes to get the job done. No matter where your skill level is or what machine you're working with, this will definitely be a design that you can apply and make comfortable for you. Now that we know how to quilt that on a sewing machine, let's see how it comes together on a long arm. Now the lines of my quilting design always happen to be 45 degree angles because that's the marking I have on my ruler. So using that 45 degree line is gonna help me keep those angles consistent. All right, so you know how to do it? Great, you're on your quilt, this is fun, but it's all fun and games until you come to the corner. Dun, dun, dun. We're gonna talk over how to turn the corner, but don't worry, you're not gonna have to worry about that on your challenge quilt. The most important thing to remember is you wanna go to that inner border corner. That's your pivot point. This is where you want your design to end up. As I start to approach that pivot point, I'm gonna stop and plot out my next couple lines and see how it's gonna work out for me. It looks like I'm gonna end up just fine. But if it was too short or too long, I would quilt these last few triangles all a little smaller or all a little bigger, so it's not as noticeable. And my last triangle is going to go to that inner pivot point. Now that I'm at that inner pivot point, I have two options. I can quilt a line to the outside and treat that as my triangle to fill it in, or I can continue on and fill in this triangle with a different design. And don't worry, if that seems confusing, I have it all in the quilting diagrams. And it just so happens we know some great triangle designs, right? Well, I'm actually gonna do a bigger version of that diamond design. So now I can go ahead and start quilting down this side of my border, just quilting the triangles in a different direction. Now, let's talk about what you're gonna do on your quilt. Go ahead and quilt in those triangles on both sides of your quilt with your favorite dot-to-dot -dot quilting design. We saw a lot of great variations, but I bet you can come up with some of your own. Now, I did something slightly different on my quilt. It's basically just the same thing, just a couple more lines and a little bit of echoing. In the quilting diagrams, I show you both ways. How to quilt it in just a strip, or if you wanna quilt it more like I've done mine, it'll have that option for you as well. And hey, thanks so much for doing this free video series with me. If you do like it, I would appreciate you giving the video a thumbs up or leaving a comment. That will help other quilters find it as well. And I'll be back next week where we wrap up the whole challenge. We're gonna learn how to use dot-to-dot -dot designs in irregularly shaped blocks and other areas of your quilt. And I'm also gonna show you how to finish it up so that your quilt will be done. Well, happy quilting and I'll see you next week.